Activist Radio is on the air. You have tuned in to the Mark Harrington Show, sponsored by Created Equal. Mark is training a new generation of leaders to take on the culture of death and win. If you don't like abortion, Mark don't have one. The only thing uh, that can be said to be objective truth is that there is no objective truth. It does come out in one week. It comes out in one week. I would argue that we certainly are not all created equal. And now, here's Mark. But today, we're at the University of Cincinnati. And the reason why is because I'm an activist primarily, and I have a TV show or radio show. I'm not a radio host or talk show host first, talking head, if you will, and an activist. I'm an activist first and a radio talk show host. So there's going to be times, there's going to be uh, in the future, in the weeks and months ahead, where I won't be in the studios. And that's because I'm out on location. I'm out with my team here at Created Equal. I'll be traveling with them. So we'll be giving you updates from the field on the work of, of Created Equal. So that's why we're here today at the University of Cincinnati here in Cincinnati, Ohio, right out front of McMicken Hall, and Tangeman Center. This is like the center of the entire campus, and students are continuing to pass through here, uh, taking literature, talking to our uh, our staff and volunteers. And we we use abortion victim photos to stimulate debate on on university campuses, and we do that because. University students need a strong message to cut through the apathy. And it needs to be done visually and it needs to be done at a glance because we live in a visual culture. We live in a culture where uh, people's attention are, are, is distracted in many different ways with all the social media and all that kind of stuff. So we've got to communicate a very complex message at a glance often. And that's why we use the still images, which are behind me here, and then Behind my producer here on campus, we have a large screen TV to which we are also playing a video of abortion victims. So uh, thank you for joining us. Again, we come to you every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on campus here today at the University of Cincinnati, but 1 p.m. Eastern Time. And we will be live on Facebook, on Created Equals Facebook page, YouTube, and Twitter, all those platforms live 1 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and on occasion like today, we're at the University of Cincinnati. So, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to cover some some topics that have been in the news recently. You know, last week we showed video, lots of video of, uh, of students and others attacking us and our equipment, and I called it the new normal. The new normal, and that is that opposition to those who support and defend life uh, is increasing. There's been a spike in, in violence and, and vandalism and so forth. Well, this week we had news come out of Australia that the Supreme Court of Australia, let me get this right, in Victoria uh, ruled, get this, ruled that the uh, public display of abortion victim photos was illegal, it's against the law, it's banned. The Supreme Court of Australia ruled that the public display of abortion victim photos is against the law. Now, as far as I know, it's the first time it's ever happened anywhere in the world, uh, especially in a free country like Australia. And um, the, the judge that ruled in this case, Michelle Frazier, uh, no, I'm sorry, she's, she's the plaintiff, sorry. She uh, lost her appeal to display abortion victim photos. And in the ruling, the judge ruled that in order to maintain the good public order, which includes the, pro, uh, the protection of the community, that obscene images or images of victims of abortion could not be displayed. And she referred to them as obscene images. Now think about that for a second obscene images. These are abortion victims. They're not, this, this isn't pornography, okay? Uh, pornography is obscene. In fact, obscenity is defined as a lewd and lascivious focus on genitalia 
in order to elicit a sexual response. That, that's what obscenity is. Obscenity is a lewd and lascivious focus on genitalia to elicit an emotional, uh, and, and I'm sorry, a sexual response. I mean, come on. Uh, look, look at this abortion victim photo behind me. Uh, sorry, but that does uh, it, that doesn't come anything close to eliciting any kind of sexual response. I'm afraid it's not obscene. It's not obscenity. Now it's graphic. Uh, it's disturbing. It's offensive. The photos are. That's true. But it has nothing to do with obscenity. But she ruled that the victim photos that this pro-life activist Michelle Fraser was displaying in Victoria, uh, in Australia, was considered obscene and therefore banned. Now, we don't know. I'm sure there might be another appeal, but this is the Supreme Court, so it may be good for now there that you cannot display publicly uh, abortion victim photos in that, st in that country. Now, thankfully, in the United States, we have decades of precedent, decades of case, of case law, decades, decades of court cases that have ruled in favor of the public display of abortion victim photos ruled in favor of the free exercise of uh, pro-life activists like myself to display abortion victim photos. Uh, and that's, you know, we've got that kind of bedrock in this country. It's very likely we can see it here, but I mean, who's to know? Who's to know, right? That that could happen. Because it could happen in Australia, it could happen in America. Thankfully, we have a First Amendment, which is fairly broad and protects all kinds of offensive and disturbing speech like abortion victim photos. So what I wanted to do here, I want to take a few minutes and make the case for the use of victim photos in the public square. People, you know, are on both on either side of this issue, pro-lifers and uh, folks that are, uh, are abortion advocates. Of course, most abortion advocates don't want the photos displayed for an obvious reason, because they're part of the cover up. They want it to be covered up so they so they can continue to lie to the American people about what abortion does. These pictures uncover that lie and therefore that's why they'd want them to not be seen. On the other hand, pro-lifers often don't want them displayed. So let me take a few minutes to make the case for the use of abortion victim photos, especially on a college campus, campus, which is the quintessential marketplace of ideas. This is the place where discussion on topics like abortion should be happening, and it should be unfettered. There should be no restraints, no 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 censorship, no stoppage, no 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 attempts to censor free speech of uh, pro-life activists like Creative Geek, all the students on this campus. But what we find, though, is people object to the photos because they'll say, well, they're offensive, they're disturbing, they're only going to turn people off. They don't uh, change minds. Well, I can bury an anecdotal evidence to the contrary. I mean, just today, we've had people change their minds because of the photos. It happens everywhere we go. Now, does it work with everybody? Of course not. Not every argument's going to work, or not not one single argument will work with everybody. We understand that. People come to the issue at, at different entry points. Sometimes the abortion image will, will make a difference in someone's heart, and sometimes it may not. It depends on where they stand with their heart, their conscience. Uh, are they, are they, do they have a functioning conscience? Are they willing to consider the plight of the unborn or not? I mean, that's really the issue. If they have a functioning conscience, then I think the abortion Im images can make a big difference. So the other the other thing is, well, first of all, anecdot anecdotally, we know they work, uh, okay? Secondarily, historically, okay, when it comes to social reform movements, all the so successful social reform movements have used victim imagery to make their point. So it should be no different with the abortion debate, right? It should be no different. I mean, if anti-war activists are successful in changing people's hearts and minds when it comes to war by using pictures of soldiers or innocents who have been killed in a bombing or what have you. Those images have had impact in our history, of course, with the Vietnam War uh, most recently and in, in some of the other wars since. Uh, those types of images have always played a part. So we look at the civil rights movement, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He made sure that the that what was happening 
behind closed doors was brought out into the light. He made sure there were photographers there to cover what was going on, and he made the American people look at it. In fact, he said he was going to shame America before the world. And uh, thankfully, he had a willing media who took the, uh, the pictures and put them on the newspapers, put them on the television sets at night. And so that changed public opinion in, in, in a great deal. And of course, we know the story of Emmett Till, right? Emmett Till, who was killed in Money, Mississippi, and his mother decided to have an open casket funeral for Emmett, despite the fact that his face was, was mutilated beyond recognition. But that image, that open casket image of Emmett Till changed the civil rights movement forever. I mean, it was a huge catalyst to beginning uh, much of the progress that was made on civil rights. So, I mean, I could go on and on and on about the use of photos like these images you see behind me. So much activism throughout American history. But I, I'm not going to do that right now because I think it's, it's, it's really something that's not even debatable. I mean, the U.S. government's even using them right now in cigarette packs. They're showing pictures of people who smoke cigarettes with diseased gums and, and uh, you know, folks that suffer from lung cancer with a breathing uh, tube inserted into their uh, throat, that kind of thing. Um, but beyond the anecdotal evidence, which I think is, to is overwhelming, that abortion victim photos do change minds, Beyond the fact that social reformers have used them historically, successfully, to change hearts and minds. Beyond that, there's one, main, one, one last point I want to make, and that's this. As Christians, we have an obligation, a responsibility, and I dare say a duty to represent the victims themselves. And to stand with them, to stand in solidarity with them in the battle. We, we need to share in their suffering, if you will. And the best way to do that so that we can personalize them is to stand next to an image of a victim of abortion. That's the best way. When I stand next to an abortion victim photo, I don't think of them as a graphic image of abortion. No, I think of it, there's an individual human being made in the image of God, created in the image of God, a human being that I need to stand in solidarity with, that I need to uh, uh, identify with on, on a very personal level, that what they went through, I am willing to also go through on their behalf. And, and the best way to defend them is to stand with them. And the only representation we have of them are the photos of those children. So for me, it's personal. It's personal. I will never abandon, abandon the children. And I'll never abandon using victim images because those are the children. I'm not ashamed of the babies. I'll never be ashamed. I'm not ashamed of these children. And, and the final point I'll make is this. A lot of people say, oh, it's, it's undignified. It, it's wrong. It's ethically wrong. You're, you're desecrating the, the lives, the, the, the memories of these children. You're desecrating the children by using it's almost like it's sacrilegious in some way because you might be they'll say you're exploiting these images they're exploiting these children for your own political gain and i say this when we show an image of a pre-born baby that's been killed by abortion we are not uh, stripping away the dignity of that child in fact that was done at the abortion not the displaying of that victim. We're actually reattaching the dignity that was lost during the abortion because when they see the victim photo, they see hands and feet, toenails, eyes. I mean, they see everything that we would identify as a human being, whether they're born or preborn. They, they look human. And therefore, those photos are the most dignified thing we could do in representing them, not the least. So. Uh, that's my short tutorial on how to defend the use of victim photos uh, in public, despite the fact that uh, the Australian Supreme Court has said that they are obscene. They're, they're again, 
this is this is not a percentage. This is, this is happening legally in America and Australia, but that that's legal. The killing of the children is legal in Australia, but the displaying of the images is criminal. Now figure that one out. Figure that one out. We get a lot of people angry that oh we're showing these pictures. Oh it's triggering people. It triggers people. They say. Well, if it triggers people, then there may be something morally wrong with that, right? I mean, something only triggers someone if there's something wrong with it. They, they're dealing with a, their conscience. They're dealing with guilt or shame. And therefore, that might trigger them. The truth of the matter is, there are a lot of triggers. Not just abortion victim photos. But women can be triggered to remember their abortion by the sound of a vacuum cleaner that might sound like, sound like the vacuum aspirator used in an abortion procedure. Women might be triggered by a, uh, a you know, a, a simple bumper sticker on the back of a car that says, vote pro-life or choose life. I mean, there's a lot of ways women could be triggered. So the trigger is the abortion, it's not the photos. I mean, they're, they're dealing with the, the guilt of the abortion and the fact that they're triggered by images or anything else means that they should be dealing with the abortion. That they should be seeking help for the abortion. So um, th that's a short tutorial on the use of abortion victim photos. Um, and so I wanted to talk yesterday. We were at the University of Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. And, um, and there's been a bunch of articles written about it. Uh, very... Uh, difficult campus, let's just say, because the abortion advocates there, uh, one of the, some of the most vile, profane, angry group of people I've ever encountered, short of maybe the March uh, for Women in D.C. Uh, but we have now seen a, a, a kind of a turning in, the, in, the, in what I call the ugly underbelly of the abortion movement itself. Uh, mocking, overt mocking and, and ridiculing of the children themselves in the face of photos and video like you see here and behind me, for people to make fun of them and us overtly. I mean, we have, in a sense, turned a corner, and, and Ohio University is probably one of the worst, but there are plenty of campuses that are bad in that way. But a lot of, was made of this device that's on my... <laughs> on my chest here that was reported in the news you know why why do they wear these these uh uh cameras why why do they wear these gopro cameras why is that why do you activists wear these and here's why because we need to we need to wear these because for security's sake two reasons a it's a deterrent because anybody who acts out unlawfully whether it's a police officer or an activist on the other side, a pro-abortion advocate, is going to be caught on film. And when they're caught on film, we can turn it over to the police and we can uh, then prosecute this individual and bring them to justice. Secondarily, uh, we use the footage. We use the footage for documentary, uh, documentary purposes and creating the kinds of videos that you see on our YouTube page and stuff like that. So it's an important part of what we're doing. A lot of people don't like about it. And the law is simple. You lose a reasonable expectation of privacy in a public area, bottom line. If you're in a public area, you can be filmed. Nobody can object to that because you're in a public area. If you don't want to be filmed, you need to go to a private area. So that's the law. When people object, I simply say the law says if you're in a public area, you lose a reasonable expectation of privacy. So we have these GoPros. We have other security protocols set in place so uh, things don't happen. Bad things don't happen to us. And generally speaking, we avoid most of them. So, in the final minutes of the program, what I wanted to do is just um, is turn around and we're going to just look at this, this image here. Um, if you would. This is one of our signs that just says, are we all created equal? Our argument is simple. Equality. Are we all created equal? Are we all equal? Are all humans equal? Born and pre-born, black, white, female, male. Jew, Gentile, right? Are we all equal? Or do we discriminate against some human beings based on some arbitrary criteria? In this case, it's simply A. The preborn are discriminated on because they are younger. 
And so what we're doing in this display that you'll see here along created equal uh, a display here is that, um, and here's an individual that just wants to knock on the side. Can you get the police game? Okay. Unfortunately, we have an individual that he's going to get a little speaking to here. That happens on occasion. Uh, Sam, would you focus in here? Uh, you know, if you notice, our, our signs are somewhat disposable, and that's a good thing because I, every once in a while I get people knocking them over. Uh, beyond that, you know, if we do prosecute, if they just knock them over, that's no big deal. Okay, Sam, so um, what's our argument? Are we all created equal? And this is a 15 meter for your born baby. The reason why that message resonates with students, the equality message resonates, is because students understand the question of equality. They're dealing with the issue of equality all the time. Equality is a big deal with a lot of students these days. Um, a lot of students these days, of course, with marriage equality, so to speak, and that kind of thing. And students don't want to be called bigots. They don't want to be considered bigots. They don't want to be considered that they might discriminate against somebody, especially, especially somebody younger. So when we, when we put it in the context of equality, the equality between the born and the pre-born, it makes sense to them. They can, they can understand that. And of course, drawing upon the words of our founders that we are endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, among those are the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And of course, the fact that the Bible in the first chapter of Genesis talks about humans being all made in the image of God, created in the image of God. And then Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. also also reiterated that from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963 when he talked about having a dream that all men were created equal. So that's our message here on campus. We also have our, our uh, Jumbotron TV set set up behind me, uh, and it's playing abortion victim photos and video along with uh, Dr. King's message, I Have a Dream. So we're having good outreach here today. Lots of students stopping by. And uh, so um, we'll be here till probably about 3 o'clock today, and then we're on to the next campus ASAP. So, folks, I want you to do one main thing, and that is this. Pray for us. Pray for our team of frontline warriors, our young people that come out on these campuses all across America. Pray for us. We need your prayers that we would be protected, but primarily that our message would be received and effective. And one last note before I sign off. My good friend and colleague, uh, Seth Dreyer, our training director here at Created Equal, will be debating Dr. David Sanders from Purdue University on April 24th at 7 p.m. April 24th, 7 p.m. at Purdue University in West Lafayette, Indiana. We are going to stream that debate live here on Facebook, on Created Equals Facebook page. So mark your calendars for 7 p.m. April 24th to watch uh, our own director of training, Created Equals director, Seth Dreyer, debate Dr. David Sanders at the University of Purdue. So uh, make sure you mark your calendars for that. I thank you for tuning in today. I'm coming to you live on location here at the University of Cincinnati obviously, in Cincinnati, Ohio. And be sure to tune in every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook, on our Created Equal Facebook page, YouTube, and uh, Twitter as well. So, we'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America. And remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist, sponsored by Created Equal. For more information on how to become a witness against the evil, evil plague in America, call Created Equal at 614-269-7808, 614-269-7808, or go online to createdequal.net, createdequal.net. Be sure to tune to The Mark Harrington Show next time for your marching orders in the culture war.